Okay. So how did you get into acting in the first place? Uh, you know, I did it kind of as long as I can remember. I wasn't uh, like a little show kid who had, you know, an agent in Tucson, Arizona, where I was growing up or, you know, I didn't belong to any like regional theater companies or anything, but I was lucky enough to go to a public school that was part of the, you know, the school district's magnet program that focused on the arts. And so from a really young age, I mean, even when I was in first grade, we did a really shoddy production of uh, Snow White in which... For whatever reason, I got to play Snow White, even though I had like white blonde hair that stuck out from the weird brown curly wig they put on top of me, on my, my five-year-old head. Um, so, you know, I, uh, I guess I got bit by the bug early, to use a cliche, and I just kept doing it through school, and I studied it in college, and then there was a period of time um, when I was working kind of in the real world uh, in San Francisco that I just stopped doing it altogether, I kind of had figured that it was not really a great um, thing to lean on for a career because it was so unlikely that I would be able to make a living doing it that I kind of walked away from it and I got involved in like the interior design world. Um, but then I was doing, then I ended up getting roped into joining a sketch comedy troupe up in San Francisco with a few friends I'd gone to college with at SF State. And they convinced me to start performing with them. And honestly, that's really what led me into um, pursuing it again because we you know, got scouted by some managers and agents. And um, I was kind of cajoled into moving down to Los Angeles because I started getting work down there. So I kind of went down there uh, here, I should say, kicking and screaming because I had really already made up my mind that I wasn't going to try to do this for a living. But it just kind of happened and uh, at a certain point I guess I had to agree with the indication that maybe it's what, what I'm supposed to be doing so here I still am hmm. yeah that's great so now you're on a new show on IFC and you play mm -hmm. Eden so how is your I know your character is really funny and it's like a horror um, series how yeah like a horror comedy series yeah yeah so how does your character play into the role of this huge horror series um so my character is a, a single mom she was in law enforcement in boston and she moved to this small town in new hampshire thinking i'm sure that life would be a little bit more slow and quiet for her and she could you know, um, raise her daughter and have a life outside of work. And instead, what she finds is that she has moved into a small town that is cursed by demons. Um, so she, instead of dealing with like the regular kind of sleepy town sheriff's uh, responsibility that she actually can't stand because this character played by the wonderful John C. McGinley is a complete misogynist, you know, bully. Um, and, uh, and so they have to begrudgingly work together because both of their lives are at stake and indeed li the lives of uh, some of the town members. And so, um, you know, it is that kind of, uh, you know, two people who definitely rub each other the wrong way, uh, having to work together for a, a common cause. And, um, but a lot of her, a lot of her uh, experience with him is like him just saying and doing completely horrifying things to her. So it's almost like it's just as hard to work with him as it is to uh, battle demons, which is saying a lot. So, yeah, this is the premiere, so it's your first season. And so, also, you are a voice actress because you did, um, you were the voice of Korra in The Legend of Korra on Nickelodeon. How was I being know. this different character? Uh, it, it was an amazing privilege. It really was a total honor. You know, she's a, she's a badass. She's complicated. Um, she, of course, is a teenage girl tasked with uh, protecting the future of the world. And I think that was probably a really big struggle for her uh, at, at times. But we had the, the best fan base and continue to have the best fan base in the world. People who are excited about, you know, cartoons that aren't just for kids. Um, storytelling that brings up actual real current issues even in the frame of being in this sort of mystical um, eastern kind of world with lots of martial arts and magic here we still have these very real issues that are being um, addressed and so it, it was, I think was a, a really inspiring show for a lot of people young people and older people 
um, because they got to see these characters um, go through things. They got to see my character go through uh, a lot of trauma and some post-traumatic stress disorder. And of course, in the end, she ends up with uh, a girl that she started as friends with and fell in love with. And that was um, considered, you know, a little bit shocking for a Nickelodeon show. And, uh, and I just applaud everyone for getting behind it because, um, you know, I look forward to living in a world where uh, those kinds of things aren't shocking. They're just part of the everyday existence of, you know, love is love. Uh...